Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out the UK. If it's, a part, if it's the first time you're passing through and you're visiting my channel, please subscribe, like and share. Um, today, I came across an article um, about how offenders who have those ankle, those GPS anklets, have to pay money. Now, I thought it was in America. I thought it was in the UK, but it's apparently in America. When they are put on parole or they, you know, they're waiting for their case to be heard, they wear these anklets, these GPS ankle bracelets or whatever they're called. They're, I think they're called monitoring, anklet, ankle monitoring devices. And would you believe that they can pay up to $10 to $35 a day? I'm flabbergasted. Because this is a government way of um, holding, you know, making sure that you're being monitored. It's supposed to save you money from not having to put people in jail. And, you know, I think it costs them about, in England, it's about £90 a day. In America, I think it's about $120 a day. So what they do is they get these ankle uh, monitoring devices, which let the people know that they haven't left the house and all that kind of stuff, and it costs them about $12, no, between $15 in America and about £12 in the UK. So, but on top of that in America, they're charging them. And these poor people who can't work because they've got this bloody big thing on their foot are having to pay 10 up from $10 to $35 a, a day. Not even a month or a week, a day. One guy is costing $840 a month. And he says it's ruining his life. He's destitute. Can't pay his bills. And the thing is, is that I, I just don't get why they would do that. It's like a double whammy. Not only what they're saying is, is that they're given a privilege because they're not in prison. They're in their homes, but in their homes they can't go out. Some of them can't have any friends around. You can't drink. You can't. You can't have a smoke. So all of those things you'd normally attribute to being home, you can't do. Apparently, some in some court cases they can't even have friends calling. So these people who are um, offenders, they um, are saying it's like being incarcerated, electronically incarcerated. And I think it's a damn shame. Apparently, even if you're innocent, if they find you innocent, one guy they found innocent, he had paid about, I think, £480 or $80. And they don't give it back to you if you find innocent. At least when you're on bail, they give you back the money if you show back if you show up for the court case. But with this um, ankle monitoring device, you don't get the money back. And sometimes these um, the private companies hound you when to, once that thing comes off, they hound you for the money, and they hound your wife or they hound your family members. And they've got license to check how much your earnings are to see how they can get their money back. They can check to make sure you can be means tested so they can get their money back. A lot of people are in so much debt because of it. I, I decided to talk about it because it never even occurred to me. I'm glad they don't do that in the UK. What's happened in the UK, though, is that they employed a firm called Serco and G4S. And G4S were putting these shackles, or electronic shackles, on people's feet. But then when um, the criminals or the offenders or whoever they were paid them 400 quid, they would loosen it so they could actually take it off and do whatever they want and put it back on. But what's happened is, is that they got found out and they were fined millions. Of course, they lost the contract. So no more Serco and G4S. Now we have Capita, the same organization or company who's dealing with DWP. So Capita must be making a mint. Because apparently this is a 60 million investment, you know, in these anklet things. 60 million, well actually 60 million 
of taxpayers is an actually 130 million investment. But 60 million of our taxpayers' money has gone down the pan because it was supposed to have been completed five years ago and it's not going to be completed now until November of this year, 2019. So that's where our money is going, folks, our hard earned money. They're complaining that they don't have much money for hospitals. They don't have money for pensions. They don't have money for universal credit. Yet they've got 60 million pounds of our money gone down the pan because of miscalculations, because of a lot of things, a lot of errors. They didn't have the expertise. I'm going to put the link in, in the description below. You can see what they've done with our money. And you can see what they're doing to people. Apparently they estimated, I think it was um, 94,000, maybe a bit more, people requiring these ankle, ankle, ankle monitors. Turns out there's only, they could only use 12,000. The sad, the sad thing is about that is that if they're forced to justify spending that money, they're going to use those anklets for anything. I mean, if they, if they stop someone, and that person, whether that person's innocent or guilty, but suppose that person's innocent and they say, OK, then we're not going to hold you in prison, but you have to wear this this chain thing. That person's going to think, well, it's better than being in jail, but it's a big clumpy thing. You can't wear trousers over it because it's too clunky. You have to have these really baggy trousers. So everybody probably knows you're hiding something. You can't go anywhere. And yet you have to wear that, that machine, I'll call it whether or not you're innocent or guilty, and, you know, for that period of time, until they say, okay, um, we don't need it, you, do, you don't need it, we've, we've checked you out, you're innocent. But the fact of the matter is, is that they're still justifying how many they're using. And if it, that's why I don't like this target-driven um, kind of processes, because when it's target driven, it's forcing people to kind of miscalculate and, and be devious. They shouldn't be saying how many people, how can you predict how many criminals you're going to have? How can you predict how many people you're going to have on probation unless you set out to get that number? You, can, you shouldn't be able to predict criminal activity in advance. Suffice to get enough money to cover so many ankle bracelets. But that's what's going on. And that's in the UK. That's not America. America is with the charging of the, with the ankle monitoring devices. With Serco, that's the UK. The special Ford squad on it, they were. So let me see what I've got here, because you know me. I like to let you know from an uh, authentic source rather than me ad-libbing. So new offender monitoring tags are in place from November 2019. That's when they envisage they're going to be ready. High tech cameras on it. Be able to take pictures when they phone you. All sorts. Satellite. <laughs> Oh dear, putting the offender in debt. Oh, well, that's America. So 60 million of taxpayers' money for a failed operation due to delays and lack of expertise in the system. Um, don't want to read that bit. Okay, it was estimated, it was 65,000 they estimated would need these monitoring tags. I think I said 85,000. So it was 65,000 tags would be used each, each year, you know. They're estimating 65,000 tags each year. How can you estimate that amount of criminal activity for every year? It was estimated that 65,000 tags would be used each year, and it's currently 12,000 tags, and they're disappointed. You'd think that they'd be bloody glad. Uh, electronic monitoring may be used for those subject to a curfew given under the Terrorism Prevention and Investigation Measures Act 2011, previously known as the Control Order under the Prevention of Terrorism Act 2005. Or they can be worn by those on release from prison or as a part of the terms of probation. House arrest involves a home monitoring unit and a convict wears an ankle monitor. 
these two pieces of equipment work in tandem to send signals to the monitoring agency 24 7. They tell the agency exactly where the convict is and whether he has done anything to the ankle monitor in an effort to slip away undetected. Some of these systems are also equipped with photogra photographic capabilities. If the agency calls a convict, the system will snap a picture of him answering the telephone, I guess, to see where he is. House arrest is considered a privilege and is normally requested by the defendant's attorney, who would then have to establish to the court's satisfaction that it's a good idea and why. Sometimes house arrest is issued as a condition of bail. The exact criteria can vary by state or even country. The person with the ankle device is not permitted to leave his residence except or his or her residence except in exceptional circumstances by the court prisoners particularly minors can usually leave home to go to school leaving the residence to work can go either way pre-approval to see a gp is required in the absence of an emergency so even if they want to go to a doctor they can't go without it being pre-approved by the court and goodness knows how long that takes to be pre-approved uh, convicts might be permitted, this is with the tag on, they'll be permitted to go to attend counselling, perform community service as part of their sentence, other court mandated appearances such as meeting with the probation or parole officer, um, defendants who have not been convicted of a crime are put on offender funder payment plans for monitors and sometimes can cost more than their bail. But unlike bail, they don't get the payment back. That's what I was talking about um, earlier. But I think this is the American thing. Offender-funded payment plans. What a bloody cheek. It wouldn't be so bad if it was real, you know, if everybody, if they tested, you know, if people who weren't um, guilty or they were just checking them out, that they weren't putting it on them. But they're just putting it on willy-nilly. And have you seen them? It's like, you know, the old chain gang back in the day. There's the sound of the men working on the chain gang. That's what it's like. Anyway, um, ankle bracelets are promoted as a humane alternative to jail. But private companies in America charge defendants hundreds of dollars a month to wear the surveillance devices. If people can't pay, they end up behind bars. A number of scandals in relation to electronic monitoring in England and Wales with a criminal investigation opened by the serious fraud office into the activities of Serco and G4S. That's what I was talking about. That's in UK. In 2017, a criminal investigation saw police make a number of arrests in relation to the allegations and at least 32 criminals on tag had paid up £400 to capital employees in order to have loose tags fitted, allowing them to remove their tags. Can you imagine the police must have been mad? And I bet that's the only ones that they could find, 32. As a result of the investigation, Serco agreed to repay 68.5 million to the taxpayer and, six, and G4S agreed to pay 109 million. That's nearly 117 million. For 32 criminal tax. It's because they compromise the system and their reputation. The duo was subsequently stripped of their contracts with Capita taking over the contract. A guy called Willard Burtz, he's an American. He's been made homeless by the cost by paying for his GPS ankle monitor. Every day about 5 p.m., 60 year old Willard Burtz has to find a power outlet. Then he has to wait two hours next to it while the battery on his ankle monitor recharges. If he lets the battery drain, hmm, where's that gone? Anyway, if he lets the battery drain, I know what happens. It conks out and then he can be arrested because they can't track him. But can you imagine having to be sit next to that thing and have it charged? Oh, it must be a bloody nightmare. You know, sometimes when you, it's, it must be a bit like, you know, if you've ever had your blood pressure taken and you're stuck to that bloody monitor, 
diameter. Or even somebody who's got an IV in their arm. I'm just trying to find the things that are restricting and you can't go anywhere because you've got this great big machine. It must be something like that. Only that is worse because if anybody was to see it, you're tagged as a criminal. Whether you're a criminal or not, people see that, they're thinking, oh, bloody hell. You can imagine the stigma and the scorn when you see somebody with an ankle thing immediately just by seeing that. You don't think, oh, that person is innocent. You think to yourself, what has that person done? Why is he out on the street? What is he going to do? What can he do? That's how, that's human psyche. And that's what these people are being subjected to. I'd, I'd imagine they'd be quite embarrassed to go out anyway with that bloody thing on their ankle. Not unless they live in a society where, you know, a lot of people are in a similar situation. And it's kind of like a fad then. But I can't imagine anyone, um, not, you know, wanting to suffer the indignity of that. Um, this is the guy where, you know, the lone people hounded his girlfriend for money because he didn't have any to pay off. I don't know how much money. I think it ended up to be about 20000 for the days that he had it on his on his foot. That's absolutely ridiculous. How can you ask that kind of money for people who are not working and who have got no way of getting that kind of money? It's absolutely ludicrous. It's like you're putting one burden on top of another. It's just like you're just driving people into the ground. You might as well just get a hammer on the head and, and just keep beating them down. Because why would you do that? Where would you expect them to get that kind of money from? You don't know how long they're going to have the ankle thing monitor on their foot. Why would you be charging them between $10 and $35 a day? Next thing you know, especially in the Trump administration, if you've got debts of any kind, you're, you're classed as a criminal. You can't travel. You can't do anything. So it's probably to do with all that. It's probably another way of criminalising people by doing that. I think it's absolutely disgusting. He says, I felt like I was dealing with a mafia loan shark, he said. Edwards is using the legal system to fight back. It accuses LCA of extorting fees from people through the threat of incarceration and violation of the federal racketeering laws. But it doesn't take away the fact that, you know, it's happening and people do that. The device isn't waterproof, so you can't bathe. You can't swim in it. I don't know what they expect you to do. I guess you have to go around it or stick your feet up over the edge of the bath or something. Across the country, defendants who have not been convicted of a crime are put on offender-funded payment plans for monitors that sometimes cost more than their bail. And unlike bail, they don't get the money back. I think I said that. Michelle Alexander, a legal scholar and columnist for The Times, has argued that monitoring engenders a new form of oppression under the guise of progress in her 2010 book, The New Jim Crow. She wrote that the term mass incarceration should refer to the system that locks people not only behind actual bars in actual prisons, but also behind virtual bars and virtual walls. Walls that are invisible to the naked eye, but function nearly as effectively as Jim Crow's laws once did at locking people of colour into permanent second class citizenship. Um, the ministry disputed that this has been an irresponsible waste of public money, asserting that just five million of the cost of programming so far had been wasted, equivalent to 4.4 million plus VAT. Compensation is paid to Steetite. Yeah, so um, spent all our money, 60 million of it. And um, they reckon it's not a waste, they've only wasted five million. I wish I had five million to waste. And um, the system of, you know, incarcerating electronically now. So when you think about the figures behind bars, we're not thinking about those on the street. And just because you can't see them, they probably bring out a new fad, which will cover the ankle trousers. So, you know, so that they don't have to be stigmatized or feel stigmatized. 
Anyway, I thought it was something I just wanted to share with you. I don't know what you think about these ankle monitors, whether or not you think they're effective, whether or not you think people should be confined to the home and not literally allowed to go anywhere, um, not allowed to smoke, not allowed to drink, not allowed to have phone calls, that kind of thing. Um, really what the government is saying is that it's saving on prison cells. So you're actually being a prisoner, but you're in your own home. Um, and also, do you think that those who have found um, not guilty, that they should have their money refunded? We're not talking about, you know, coppers here. We're talking about thousands of pounds. And that's all for now. Bye bye.